<clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. You guys, welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. Yeah. And I got a full on vlog uh, planned out for you guys tonight. We're doing things a little bit uh, a little bit differently tonight. There might be a little bit of confusion happening. I'm just going to explain what's going on. What what you are seeing right now on the screen is definitely, definitely not not live, not live. And that's going to become very apparent in about 10 seconds when I get to the end of this sentence and there's going to be a cut. Jump cuts are going to be the first red flag that this isn't live. I thought it would be fun and I thought it would be a little bit of a challenge to myself to kind of shoot and do like an old school shot and edited vlog like I used to do. You know, 2019 became such a year of like streaming like oh you got to stream everybody's streaming we're doing multiple live streams and everybody's streaming you know all over the place and twitch and youtube and i just thought yeah i, I want to do that i want to stream and i like streaming and i'm going to jump into it and we're going to stream and it was one of those things that just got so like consuming to me like i you know i was thinking about streaming and it turned out it was like it takes me all this time to like prep the stream and get all the segments ready and do all the streaming stuff and get all this stuff done that i kind of forgot like remember when i just used to shoot videos and like shoot videos and edit videos so that's what this is so if everything went to plan right now it should be shortly after 4 p.m on a thursday we should all possibly be watching this live on youtube together there should be a chat going on right over here and i should be in that chat chat just chatting it up chatting it up chatting it up with everybody who's here to watch tonight i haven't decided yet as of right now if super chats are going to be going during this vlog but if they are i will only be able to respond to them via you know keyboard via text in the chat so if the super chats are going i'll just try to answer those as it goes on but welcome you guys here we go this is a wretch <laughs> this is basically a full-on retro vlog all of the timestamps will be as usual in that first pinned comment right underneath the video. In fact, Jeremy V, you got the freaking night off tonight. I've already collected all of the timestamps and they will be after this is done showing, done premiering. Look, I'm not entirely sure how this YouTube premiere thing works. So after this is done premiering and after we've watched the vlog together and after we've got to hang out and have some fellowship time, then all of the timestamps will be available in that first pinned comment underneath uh, underneath this video. I originally had this idea that I wanted to do like an old school pre-shot vlog like a few weeks ago. I've just been, you know, I'm a creative person and I just get creatively like antsy sometimes. Like when I keep doing things over over and over again, that's when I want to start changing it up. You know, that's what led me to streaming in the first place. Shooting and editing videos for, you know, eight, nine years, now suddenly streaming is like this new fun, cool thing. And I've just been streaming for a few years now. So I don't know, you know, getting back, to, getting back to my roots, I guess, just shooting and editing a vlog. But we are going to be doing all of the segments tonight. I have a, a beer tasting that I'm really looking forward to. We're gonna be quickly talking about some things that I've been vaping. I do have a little bit of mail tonight, not very much, but a little bit. I do have a very random liquid tasting that I am very, very much looking forward to. I've also got what? Oh, that's right, a retro vaping that I am actually actually really excited to try. I haven't tried this since I did a review for it. Woo! Let's see, are there any spoilers? There's no spoilers in the title. There's no spoilers in the description. All right, well, that might main a, remain a surprise until we get to the retro vaping segment. And because tonight we have the luxury of being pre-shot and edited, I'm gonna finally do my favorite comments of the week. We're gonna wrap this vlog up as we used to do with my favorite freaking comments of the week. But before we get too far into this vlog, I, I wanna do that thing. Started off a long time ago. It's my new favorite thing where I get to wanna hear from one of my subscribers. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna hear real quickly from Eifer. Hey Nick, I just thought I'd share this with you. My mother uh, named a character in this game after you. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, let's keep on vaping. <laughs> I don't I for I don't know what video game that is. I'm not a uh I'm not a video game guy. You know, I used to be a video game guy. Maybe someday we'll go we'll do a getting to know Grim Green and we'll talk about video games, but I grew up 
in video games, just steeped crazy in video games, and I loved it, and when I was in it, I thought, I'm never gonna not be into video games, what are you, crazy? Fast forward to me turning 43 years old in 2020, I haven't played video games in years. Unfortunately, depressingly, I have not played video games in years, so I couldn't name the video game there I sound like such an old person. Okay, boomer. Video games. You guys in your, your video games with your fancy joysticks. Couldn't name that game. I'm honored to have a character named after me. Anybody is always more than welcome to name any characters Grim Green. Just, you know, I mean, you don't have to give me credit, but if like, take a screenshot, send it over, be like, bro, I named it Grim Green. I named this, you know, I don't know, what's in a video? This uh, cleric. That's from video games, right? I named this monk, I named this monk Grim Green. Well, thank you very much, Eifer, for that video. And if anybody else out there watching has any videos that they would like to be, see featured on this here vlog video, you can send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, you know, that one thing. Chances are I'll see the attachment, watch it, save it. Might get featured on a vlog here. And you can you can really send over anything. You wanna shout me out, shout your shop out, you know, talk about your favorite RDA, talk about, you know, your, your sister that you got a jewel for and now she rocks a sub ohm tank anything you want to just shoot the shit you want to show off your gear you want you want to talk about star wars the rise of skywalker we can do that just send them on over to me nick at grimgreen.com so now hmm i don't remember ever having this much freedom before in a vlog i don't think we're gonna do any sort of like change of locations type of thing although now that i'm editing this vlog today we do we have that freedom we can kind of go wherever we want hmm all right maybe we'll do a little maybe we'll do a later on segment somewhere else in the house but right now now, right now, what I wanted to do uh, before we get to beer, uh, I real just real quickly just want to talk about what I've been vaping, and I don't have a bumper for this, so it's just not your best work, Nick. Not not your best work. So I feel like I always have a grim kit or two going. The one, the Apaca Bone one, I think is out in the living room. Oh no, no, it's right here. The Apaca Bone Grim kit that he carved on there. I just freaking love the crap out of this thing. I use it constantly. I recently got out the purple one, and again, I make no apologies about that really super hyper dorky drip tip on there. I just like it. Hmm, strawberry milkshake tobacco. I've also been using this Proton Mini Kit with the Horizon Tech Falcon 2 tank on top. And this Falcon 2 tank, you guys, has literally, literally been to hell and back. Started off as just a Falcon 2 sub ohm tank. I thought, I, I, I just want a banger, like a real simple banger I can set up. I just I just want to fill up a sub ohm tank and vape a sub ohm tank. You know, sometimes I, I just want it. I just need it. Simple, easy to use, just give me a vape. So I filled this up with squeeze apple, which is like an apple culotta flavor. Vaping it, vaping it, probably went through two tanks, decided I'm just gonna throw another flavor in there. So I threw squeezed grapefruit in there. Kind of went along, transitioned real quickly to grapefruit. And then I started getting out of control. I started really getting out of hand. I thought, well, it switched over flavors so easily that first time, let's just keep this party going. So after it got down from the grapefruit, I just went straight in with pony on acid, vaped a few tanks of pony on acid. I went from pony on acid to grapes, down under for a few tanks. I went from grapes down under to coil spill, rich kids of Instagram for a few tanks. I went from that to rescued e-liquids Ben for a few tanks. And the flavor just kept transitioning and kept transitioning. It just became this like obsession, like this experiment. How many liquid flavors can I vape out of one coil head? After rescued e-liquid Ben, I went to super good peach, uh, not peach, the pear fizz champagne. I went from that super good pear fizz champagne to the Burrio uh, green bean coconut flavor. The green bean coconut flavor is kind of where things started really going sideways. After that, it was hard to recover. I went back to Pony on Acid after that. And then after a few tanks of Pony on Acid, I finally ended up with Ohm Shake, Dwayne's liquid Ohm Shake in here. And I'm happy to report that after all of those liquids, this coil head is finally just garbage now. It started tasting like just terribleness, like w like wet cardboard, like sweet, wet cardboard. It started getting burnt, and the sure sign of a coil head dying is A, that cardboard flavor, and then B, when you have to start turning your wattage way, way, way down. I've dropped this wattage all the way down to 45 watts. It's a 0.15 and it's all the way down to 45 watts, and that's the only way I can vape it and not have it taste like, uh, you know, burnt. <laughs> Ew. 
it just got weird. There's a little bit of mung bean in there. There's a little bit of pony on acid in there. There's like a little bit of this ohm shake in there. But it was an interesting experiment nonetheless to see how many flavors this falcon coil head could go through. Just living that clutch life, still recoil RDA V1 on top. That's a DHD metal head. That is loaded up with another super good flavor. This is the butter lemon blueberry sponge cream. It's really good. It's really good and really very interesting. Those flavors I wouldn't expect to like play off each other really well. Like lemon, I don't know, lemon, berry, sponge cake, and cream. Interesting. It's just a really interesting flavor. I really like it. Still vaping on that type two RTA. There you go. No screenshots. Sitting on top of that orange minikin that I dug out. It's filled up with same liquid, that Om Boy OC Om Shake from Indonesia. I just really like it. Strawberry milkshake, dude. He killed it. Type two is just a flavor banger. And I'm really just, no, I'm not trying to just talk my own RTA up, but this thing is a flavor banger. I, people are still really heavily asking me about the RTA. I'm not just dragging this out on purpose for any reason just to build hype. I just want it to be right. That's what, that's what I've been doing with this RTA. This RTA is my first project that is just me, just by myself. After 10 years of being Grim Green, I'm, I'm releasing a product that is purely my vision, purely my design, purely everything from the ground up. And I just wanna take my time and, and I wanna do it right and I want it to be kick ass. And it's there, baby. It's there, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit involved. This RT is not gonna be for everybody. I'm gonna show you how to use it. I'm gonna show you how to get the best performance possible, the best flavor possible. Not right now, when the RTA comes out, obviously I'll have a video for it. But you guys are in for a flavor country treat, flavor flavor planet, flavor galaxy. Second to lastly, it's that Aspen Vodka Monarch, still topped with the dead goat from last week, still vaping the Black Panther from Dr. Vapes, the Panther series. It's the creamy tobacco. It's the creamy tobacco, and I literally, I just cannot get enough of it. Even with like halfway dying batteries, it's still spectacular. And now, lastly, but finally, but la certainly, certainly not leastly, one of my patrons, Thomas freaking Crow, a, a number of months ago, this might have been well over a year ago, he made or had commissioned a custom yo-yo chromed out hexome. And I have been polishing it up Hexome Nation right there. Hexome Nation, yo yo on the other side. It's topped with that Death Trap 2 RDA. Look at those fingerprints already, already. I've been handling this with a very light feather fingertip sort of touch. Trying not to get fingerprints or liquid or anything anywhere. And the story goes, there was a time when Thomas Crow had posted um, and said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to sell this Hexome you know, I, I need the cash, I need to sell this Hexome. And I said, I'm gonna buy that Hexome from you. You made a custom like yo yo Grim Green Patreon Hexome that has to stay in the family. That's not going to just anybody. You're not just gonna sell that to some random stranger. I, Thomas Crow, will be purchasing that from you. So I bought it. It's been sitting on my shelf. It's really more of a display item just because it's such a fingerprint magnet, but I decided to get it out the other day and, and just rock it and just use it. Let's just really use it. Let's put our hands all over it. Feels good to do that, you know, to really just really fuck up a fingerprinty mod. Vaping awesome. In fact, if everything goes to plan, we might be putting a, we might be putting a brand new coil in this death trap RDA today in this vlog. Transistor Tango Melon on the inside. It is a coil annihilator. It is not kind to coils. It's, it's a beautifully delicious sweet flavor, but it will just wreck your coils into next week. So yeah, that's more or less what I've been vaping. In fact, what I'm going to do right now is, uh, it's time. I'm thirsty. Let's, let's have a beer.
Well, the beer that we are going to be tasting tonight is Single Speed. This comes from Four Hands Brewing. Actually, we got this beer last week in the vlog from Mr. Dalton, Dalton Drippery. And I remember because I wrote Dalt on the bottom. And now I remember who Dalt is. It's Mr. Dalton Drippery. Drippery? I think that's correct. I think it's Dalton Drippery. This is an American blonde ale brewed in Missouri. Missouri, United States. Our American blonde ale is brewed with elder. Elderflower? What? I love the crap out of elderflower. How did you know, Dalton? Did you know that I liked elderflower? Have I mentioned that before? Oh. Elderflower adds a soft floral element that accentuates the red wheat. Single speed pours straw in color with floral undertones. Well, dang, here we go. Oh, look at that. It's like a funhouse mirror. <laughs> Maybe not going to be drinking this out of a, uh, a little tulip glass. This is just a, deli a little delirium tremens uh, tulip style glass. Belgian brewery. Brewery? Belgian brewery. Well, let's pour it over the microphone since we don't have a keyboard. Yep, it's pouring a, a, a wheaty color. That is a wheaty color, isn't it? I would definitely describe that as wheaty. Just, just a little bit of head on there like that. Just a little bit of head right there. All right. Well, cheers. This is to you guys. Thanks for coming out. Happy vlog day. Oh, wow. Um, it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot sourer, sourer. It's a lot more sour than I thought it was going to be. It's very crisp, very crispy, very refreshing. There is kind of like that really subtle, like floral undertone, kind of like you would get. I mean, the only comparison I can make it to, which is a weird comparison, is coffees from uh, like East Africa in the Ethiopia region. They have that same floral undertone. Like it still tastes like coffee. Like it still tastes like coffee. It just has like a floral kind of component to it. This beer is kind of very much that same way. It still tastes like beer. It all, I get a little bit of sourness from this and I don't know if it's supposed to be like a sour sour, but I get a slight sourness to it. Not a negative way, like a, a positive, like if it's a sour beer, like a positive sour, okay? Dang, nice and uh, Nice and carbonated or effervescent. You get some nice uh, citrusy, like a uh, sweetness in there. I, the elderflower, I don't know. I'm not honing in, like picking up the elderflower, but if it's there, it's there. Luckily, I'm not, why, I have no reason not to believe single speed. I have no reason not to believe four hands brewing. If they say there's elderflower in there to sort of round out the floral notes, then shit, it's in there. I don't know really what I have right now that would pair well with this. I legitimately think we should just try this tobacco real quick. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's not amazing, but a tobacco liquid always pairs, I feel, pretty well with like most any beers out there. Let's try uh let's try the tango melon. I don't know why. I just want to try the tango melon with this. Hmm. That's actually not bad. I think the sweetness of that tango melon really sort of complements the sweetness that's kind of already in this beer. Well. All right, dang. Well, there you go. Single speed. Where was this? Four Hands Brewing Company out of Missouri sent over by the incomparable, if I may, incomparable Dalton Drippery. Thanks. Delicious. Delicioso. Awesome. All right. Well, we're moving right along in this vlog. I, like I said, I do have a little bit of mail. And by a little bit of mail, I mean actually literally just two packages. But that's okay. You know, it's not always about the mail. I actually like it when there's no mail because then we can get to other segments as well. Let's do it. It's time for some vape mail. You know, this whole time I thought these were vanilla scented garbage bags, but I think they're actually Febreze scented. And that is messing with my mind grapes right now. I don't know how every single time I pulled one of these out and thought it was vanilla, I think I actually smelled vanilla in my head. Brains are weird. So like I said, I only really have two packages here and that's okay. We're gonna open both of them. I know what's in this one for sure. This is the one from, uh, this is the one from Coil Turd. I commissioned some more bigger coils. I wanted a bigger coil for that. In fact, 
Who was I talking to? Damn it, man. Who was I talking to? Was that uh, Patches? Was that Patches O'Hooligan? <laughs> I think I was talking to Patches O'Hooligan from the Patreon, and he was telling me about his death trap, and he said the maximum size that he could get in there was a seven millimeter coil. He said it gets a little bit too close to the drip tip, and you don't want to be vaping plastic. And I thought, yeah, seven millimeter coil, that might max it out. But even then, you could probably put a metal drip tip in there and not have to worry maybe so much about the, the coils being too close to your drip tip. Want to max it out in there, man. All right, so this is what we got from Beecher. Quad core 27 gauge aliens, big as fuck. Oh, geez. Those are big. Wow. All right, well, that's one of them. And the other ones, look how big those are. Those are just kind of sitting there. Those are some honking ass coils. Well, shit, I kind of want to put one I kind of want to put one in that death trap. Like that's kind of the goal. Usually during my vape mail segments, I always try to find something that I can kind of set up along the way, you know, and I got these big ass coils. I've been loving the death trap. I might just do it. Additionally, from Coil Turd, I got some mouth to lung coils. Him and M Turk are both kind of doing the same thing. They're adapting to the market, which I think is fantastic. And they're knocking out these crazy tiny mouth to lung coils. I mean, they're just the tiniest little things. I can't, I don't even know if I could show them to you on video. Can you kind of get an idea of how small these little coils are from Coil Turd? They say MTL coils, it looks like dual 32 gauge cores, uh, clapped and with 40 gauge twisted messes, Nichrome 80. These are two and a half millimeter and one single coil should come out to a 0.75. And if that's the case, then these are going to work rad in like a K-Fun. Um, I know Turk sent over some mouth to lung coils and Beecher sent over some mouth to lung coils. So what I might do in the future is a video kind of maybe comparing both of these mouth to lung coils. I only have one K-Fun because Beecher still has my K-Fun Lite Plus. But I do have other mouth to lung tanks. I have that reload mouth to lung tank. I have my K-Fun. I might do a little bit of like a coil turd Turk mouth to lung coil head to head thing. I love this idea. Then I got a deep turd sticker, so yeah. <laughs> deep turd. Second package, which also happens to be the last package. Yeah. Right, right, right. Face masks. Face masks? Pickle, did we order face masks? Ooh. Geek Vape face masks. All right, well, shit. Shout out to Geek Vape for the face masks. I don't know if they're manufacturing these. Look at that. Just COVID vlog, COVID vlog. Welcome to the COVID vlog. I'm gonna do the rest of the vlog in a face mask, I guess. I'm very confused. I mean, thank you, Geek Vape. I needed face masks. I was cutting t-shirts into face masks. In fact, I think in a few weeks, I think in a week or two, we're gonna have some Grim Army face masks because face masks are one of the few things that people are producing right now. And I need them because they're mandatory in Los Angeles. All right, well, thank you, Geek Vape, for the face mask. Hang on, hang on. Yeah. There, does that uh, ruin the integrity of the mask? Just put a deep turd sticker right in the middle. Hey, that's cool. Why not rep your favorite bands during a uh, COVID pandemic quarantine? This is the new normal now. You guys didn't know? All right, well, I got face masks and I got uh, coils. I I'm sure there's probably some people watching the video right now going, is he really going to do the rest of the vlog with the face mask on? Well. Unfortunately, the answer to that question, oh God, of course not. Still kind of cool though. And it's true in Los Angeles, if you leave your house, you have to wear a face mask. That's where we're at right now. So I think what we're gonna do right now before we get into any news and advocacy is I, I have to, right? I, I have to install a coil on the death trap. And I realizing that I actually can install this coil on the death trap. We have the luxury of being edited right now. We have the luxury of not being live. So I can just do an edit and come back and it'll already be built. This is a wonderful technological wonder world we live in. So let's, let's do that now. So this is the coil that I have in here right now. This was the other 
big beecher coil from that from that video from the death trap video this is the beecher behemoth coil and it's been i mean honestly it'll fire it's been great it's been really great but i just want to get a bigger coil in there so bad and i don't know why it's just this curiosity for me so first things first we're gonna have to say goodbye to the beecher behemoth coil bye all right well it's kind of getting there it's difficult <laughs> but it's kind of getting there all right well <laughs> that did not go the way that i wanted it to so one of the coils was just too big i should have listened to uh patches and uh, I didn't. I installed it, I got it glowing evenly. It was a contact coil. I put the top cap on, I fired it, and the bottom of one of my favorite, you know, clear, crystally uh, 810 drip tips it melted. Just stunk like horrible, stinking, melted plastic. And I was like, oh, come on. Burnt it. I should have listened to Patches. Patches, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. I should have. Now I can't use this drip tip anymore, but another one of the Beecher coils has worked, it's it's fit in here. I haven't put the top cap on yet. I had to space it out a little bit. Yeah, do you see that? It's kind of spaced out. I had to space it out in order to get it to glow evenly because it just, uh, it just wouldn't glow. I couldn't get it to glow because it was too touching together. I didn't have the proper diameter, whatever this diameter was. I think, I think it's like a five and a half or six millimeter coil like i said i had to do some spacing so it doesn't look super pretty oh but it glows so evenly it just looks so bad just looks so bad but it's whatever who cares i'm gonna put some cotton in here and this is gonna get vaped nope not enough cotton not enough cotton unbelievable okay i'm gonna use half of a pad of cotton bacon and hope that that's enough oh shit. yep <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm interested to see how this vapes. It looks ugly as sin. And I did manage to wick it okay. Ugly and wicked, but we're still gonna put that same transistor tango melon on here. If I could just find the bottle. Obviously it's going to need substantially more wattage. This came out, this single coil came out to a point two six nine so i think i'm gonna try to run this at like 80 watts oh yep yeah, that's literally about as big as you can get without running into uh without running into drip tip issues all right so for the sake of safety reasons i put a metal drip tip in there this coil kind of takes up the whole chamber i'm not a hundred percent sure what the diameter was the other one must have been about seven millimeters because patches warned me it would melt my drip tip and it did so i'm assuming that this one is a little bit smaller six millimeters six and a half millimeters and i had to space it out it was running out of room on top of that hexome so it ended up on top of this death mods so shit let's give it a try Yeah, honestly, vaping real good. Looks like crap, vapes like awesome. Yeah, I mean, the more, the more of that chamber that you take up with a coil and cotton, it's just gonna improve your flavor uh, exponentially. And at the end of the day, really, this is just a big cloud chasey atomizer. So as long as you exhale a weather system from your mouth, I think we'll be satisfied. I will be satisfied by this. And there's even a little bit of crackle to these coils, Beecher. Well done. Well done. Let's just, real quick, let's just hear it for Beecher. All his hard work building this big coil. Thank you. Loving it. All right, so that's vape mail, and that's a big old honking coil from Beecher. So I think what I'd like to do right now, I still got some time before lunch, you know? This is old school. I have to schedule my vlog out like I used to before lunch and after lunch. Feels so, uh... I don't know, nostalgic, I guess. So with that said, before lunch, let's just do, let's do it right now. It's news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. So the first, first thing, the very first thing I wanna mention on this week's news and advocacy segment is a CASA call to action. It's the hashtag essential to us 
call to action. States are responding to their own outbreaks of COVID-19 by implementing different versions of social distancing and shutting down non-essential services. While some of these businesses are being guaranteed exemptions, for example, restaurants can still offer curbside pickup and delivery, and liquor stores are open with strict social distancing protocols. There are questions about whether or not vape shops are allowed to remain open in any capacity. Vape shops are essential to us. We know from recent experience that denying people access to vape shops will send many of them back to smoking. During these state and local shutdown orders, gas station, convenience stores, groceries, and pharmacies are being allowed to remain open. Obviously, food, fuel, and medicine are essential, but those retailers also sell combustible tobacco and do so without providing access to the full range of safer alternatives. FDA guidance prohibits them from selling the full range of vapor products, and these retail environments will never be able to replicate the service provided by vape shops. Governors need to hear from consumers. Yes, 8,000%. It's crazy to me that vape shops are not instantly exempt from any sort of shutdown. I wholeheartedly agree that things like grocery stores, sure, curbside pickup, social distancing, liquor stores should absolutely be open. It's not even up for debate. Delivery, curbside pickup, there's no reason, literally no reason other than maybe a vindictive reason to shut down vape shops in any state that is in quarantine because of COVID-19. We've been defending vapor and defending our right to use vapor products. We've been defending vaping as a less harmful alternative to combustible tobacco cigarettes for years and years and years. And here we are in 2020 in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we're still having to, having to defend our rights to not smoke combustible tobacco cigarettes. It's just enough to, to make you wanna pull your hair out. You know, and it was hard enough. It was hard enough trying to defend vaping uh, even before the lung injuries. Like it was hard enough trying to defend vaping in 2016 when it was at its peak of popularity. It was hard to defend it then. And it just gets harder and harder and harder and harder to defend it and harder to defend it. Not because we don't believe in it, but simply because of constant, constant, constant outside pressure, outside attacks on vaping. So that's the first thing. I will have a link down in the description to this CASA call to action. I really would encourage everybody to, to do this call to action, to start using that essential to us hashtag, essential to us hashtag when we're posting on social media and stuff. <laughs> okay, you wanna talk about Scott Gottlieb a little bit? Let's talk about Scott Gottlieb a little bit. Let's talk about Scott Gottlieb a little bit. I have been, I don't know, I've been talking about Scott Gottlieb on this YouTube, in these vlogs, just, God, it seems like forever, doesn't it? Scott Gottlieb, former head of the FDA, he has a little bit of, well, little bit. He's got a large bit of kind of this revolving door, you know, between him and pharma and government. He just, he does the loop, you know, in and out of pharma, in and out of the government. Seems to be a little bit of a spokesperson, as it were, for big pharmaceuticals. His big accomplishment when he got into the FDA was, everybody remembers the first thing he tried to do, lower nicotine cigarettes, even though at that time in 2017, we're starting to notice this youth uptick of jewel use. 2017 was the year of that word jeweling. Everybody's jeweling, everybody's jeweling. You're jeweling, everybody's jeweling. Everybody, even people I know, if they saw me vaping, they'd be like, ah, what are you jeweling? No, I I'm, I'm vaping. What the youths are doing is jeweling. This has always been a jewel issue. And so Scott Gottlieb, the first thing he did was ignore the uptick in youth vaping and went straight for lower nicotine cigarettes. And the only thing he said about vaping was, we've noticed like, honky thing, we've noticed, uh, you know, an uptick in, uh, in youth vaping. And uh, if this trend continues, we're gonna monitor it for a year and if this trend continues, then, and only then, after a year, we're going to continue to let va continue to let Jewel do whatever they're gonna do. We're gonna, they're gonna continue to have youths being curious about vaping. And if that trend continues, then, 
then we're going to have to step in. You know, then we're going to have to step in and regulate. Well, I ran across this great article from The Federalist and the big headline on it that I love, I just love being, I love people being critical of Scott Gottlieb. Can we trust Scott Gottlieb after he caused a moral panic about vaping? Scott was the man that kicked off all of this. Anything that had to do with juuling youth epidemic. He was the first person to use the word epidemic based off of the 2017 National Youth Tobacco Survey that he wouldn't, nobody else could see it. Nobody else could see that data. He's like, nope, I'm, I'm looking at the data and it's, it's an epidemic. I'm looking at the data. And it's an epidemic. And all of us were kind of just sitting here going, and I said this multiple times. I said, Scott, prove it. Prove the epidemic. That's all we're asking. You just got to prove that epidemic because I don't believe that it's real. Obviously, it turns out it's not real. It's not a thing. The actual number of non-smoking, non-vaping youths that have experimented with vaping is so dramatically low that it's it's barely a statistic. It's barely relevant. Former Food and Drug Administration Commissioner Scott Gottlieb has taken a new role in the area of Wuhan coronavirus as an expert in the realm of infectious diseases, appearing on multiple media platforms to expound on the response to the virus. On Sunday's Face the Nation on CBS, Gottlieb grounded at length on infectious disease, predicting that the scenes out of New York are going to be shocking. One problem. Gottlieb is not an expert on the spread of infectious disease and has never focused in that area of health policy work. In fact, he is best known for his role at the FDA in fomenting a deceptive moral panic over vaping. I like that Scott Gottlieb is being discredited by the the stuff, his own doing, the stuff that he has said and the actions that he has taken is just discrediting him himself in front of other people. Now, this article comes from The Federalist. It was written by Tristan Justice, who, as far as I can tell, is just a journalist and he's worked for the Washington Examiner in the past. He seems to have no dog in this vaping race at all. I legitimately feel like the one thing that COVID, this COVID-19 pandemic has really brought to the forefront is that I, all all of these health organizations and all of these people like the Surgeon General and Scott Gottlieb were kind of just sitting there prior to this, just sitting on their hands. They made vaping seem so dangerous and so intense and so severe and called it an epidemic so many times, just ad nauseum over and over and over again, that when a real actual epidemic starts happening in the United States, the people that were being lied to before about vaping are instantly just distrusting of the government and of these health orgs that are telling them this. And truly and honestly, I, I don't, I mean, how could you blame them? You can't blame them at all. They've been being lied to and being misinformed about vaping and about Evoli and maybe what's causing these lung injuries. And it turns out, oh, it's not nicotine, nothing to do with nicotine nicotine and the lung injuries. Sorry that we've been lying to you this whole time about Evoli, but you're really just going to have to trust us now about COVID. I think the title of this article is great. Can we trust Scott Gottlieb now? I mean, I would say no, but I think this extends beyond Scott Gottlieb. This extends to the CDC who purposefully dragged their feet during the botched Evoli investigations. I think this reflects onto the World Health Organization who during Evoli was trying to convince Americans that e-liquid was highly flammable. A water soluble liquid was highly flammable. That statement came out of the World Health Organization. This article wraps up with just a spectacular paragraph and I'm gonna read it to you now. I am gonna put a link for this article from thefederalist.com, definitely in the description of this video. Read it, share it, let's just, Let's all be critical of Scott Gottlieb. Gottlieb coordinated a mass panic over vaping and never led an active effort against infectious disease outbreak. The idea that he is now supposed to be taken seriously in the midst of a global pandemic over the Wuhan virus credits him with a level of expertise he has not earned and ignores the many exaggerations and untruths he advanced on the vaping issue. 
just a uh, just a really good really good article over there by Tristan and like I said from the federalist.com I'll, I'll post a link down in the description and I guess kind of the last thing I wanted to touch on here in the news and advocacy section is this link uh, is from fda.gov and I think this link came from an FDA.gov tweet. And it was one of those tweets on Twitter that FDA loves to put out that's like, uh, you know, confusing and, and alarmist and really panicky. You know, it was one of those, uh, you know, April fools, don't be fooled. There is no safe tobacco. There is no safe, you know, and it's like no cigarettes, no vaping, no snooze, no tobacco, no nothing, just prohibition, abstain from everything, be scared of all of this stuff. And so this is from the FDA.gov website and it's a whole press release, like article, informational article about nicotine, which nicotine has been getting studied for, I mean, there's very little we don't know about nicotine. We're very, very well aware of all of the effects, potential harms, potential hazards, potential benefits of nicotine. And it's just really interesting sort of reading this, I don't know what else to call it other than propaganda. It's kind of weird reading this information from the FDA because you instantly get the vibe that this is not objective information. This isn't just, here's the cold hard data, objective information on nicotine. The FDA wants you to feel a certain way about nicotine and the way that they want you to feel about nicotine is bad. Nicotine is just bad. It's addictive, it's bad, you should be scared of it. Nicotine, the highly addictive chemical compound present in the tobacco plant, tobacco products, including cigarettes, cigars, smokeless tobacco, hookah tobacco, and most e-cigarettes contain nicotine. Very little positive things about nicotine get said in this entire press release. They talk about, well, nicotine leads you to addiction. They talk about nicotine, young brains. You know, that's another thing we've been hearing only recently though, not in the 90s. In the 90s when there was, you know, 30% of high school students were smoking, we never heard in the 90s that, oh, nicotine alters your brain. But they talk about that in this. They talk about you should be scared of it. Your kids should be scared of it. It leads to addiction. It makes you more, not only does it addict you, but it makes you more susceptible and leads you to more addictions. Pregnancy. They talk about pregnancy. And if you're pregnant, you should be scared of nicotine. It's going to, it's going to ruin your baby's head. And then down towards the bottom, and I'm going to put a link to this down in the description so you can read it for yourself. You get to this little, little section. This weird little section that just says nicotine and adult harm reduction. Harm reduction. What the, what the hell? Yes, harm reduction. The Those two words that like 100% of vapors have been talking about for the better part of a decade. Tobacco harm reduction. It's being singled out by the FDA. FDA is committed to protecting the public health of all Americans while regulating an addictive product that carries with it health risks. To this end, the agency is conducting ongoing research on potentially less harmful forms of nicotine delivery for adults, such as electronic nicotine, nicotine delivery system or ENDS, E cigarettes. The agency is conducting ongoing research on potentially less harmful forms of nicotine. Look, look, they're kind of getting there. They're kind of getting there, but it's they're getting there slow. They've said potentially less harmful. That is leaps and bounds farther than they were before with vaping. Potentially less harmful. It's not like a full United Kingdom Royal College of Physicians tobacco harm reduction yet, but at least in an official FDA document, the words potentially less harmful forms of nicotine delivery for adults exists and they just sound especially especially if we're reading this like if you were reading that any of you if any of my subscribers were reading this if any vapors were reading this if any thr advocates were reading this it seems like the fda is just fucking living in the stone age though more research on both individual and population health effects is needed sure I'll give you that. More research can always only be a good thing. Many studies suggest e-cigarettes 
might be less harmful than combustible cigarettes. Many studies, what's cr they They'll easily say many studies suggest that e-cigarettes must be less harmful than combustible cigarettes, but when you're on TV, when Jerome Adams is on TV, when Scott Gottlieb is on TV, when Stephen Hahn from the FDA is on TV, nobody ever mentions the studies. Where are these studies? The only studies we hear about are those, oh, you know, Stanton Glantz studies, you know? Oh, vaping definitely leads to smoking. That's the study we hear about. We hear about retracted junk science studies. Vaping's bad for your heart. Vaping's bad for your lungs. Vaping's bad for your brain. Vaping's bad for your circulatory system. All based on garbage that mostly ended up needing to be retracted. It was so bad. Why aren't we hearing about these many studies that suggest that e-cigarettes could be less harmful than combustible tobacco cigarettes? Why isn't that being communicated by the FDA to the hundreds of thousands of currently addicted adult cigarette smokers in the United States. Even if FDA just came out and said that one sentence, look, American public, many studies suggest that e-cigarettes might be less hazardous than combustible cigarettes. If they just said that to every smoker, instant instant net benefit to public health, instant. But they don't, we don't hear about that. We don't hear about these studies that show they may be less harmful. We just hear about the Stanton Glance shit. We just hear about that hogwash. We have the American Heart Association saying, oh, you shouldn't vape. Vaping's, vaping's bad for your heart. Criminal. God, I hope that people like the World Health Organization, the American Lung Association, the American Heart Association, Scott Gottlieb and Jerome Adams, can eventually be held accountable when the painful and obvious truth that e-cigarettes are substantially less harmful for you finally comes out, finally comes to light, and is finally accepted as a truth that you couldn't possibly deny anymore. I can only hope that their past actions will be held accountable. I can only hope that they will be held accountable for their past actions. I can only hope that Scott Gottlieb is held accountable for literally discouraging smokers from switching to less harmful vapor products. All right, well, before we start getting any rage sweat going, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this little news and advocacy segment. Like I said, I'm gonna have a links to everything that I talked about, this FDA press release, the Can We Trust Scott Gottlieb article from The Federalist, as well as as the CASA call to action, hashtag essential to us. All right, cool. Well, dang, we've reached that halfway mark like we used to do in the vlogs. And I just wanna say, feel, feels good. It feels, I feel pretty good just kind of like jumping back into this, shooting some vlog, editing some vlog. I hope everybody's enjoying the, uh, the, 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 the new, yet old, yet retro sort of a vlog situation that's happening tonight. So what I am going to do right now is I'm just gonna take a quick little break. I'm gonna go eat lunch, but right when I get back from lunch, right when I get back from lunch, I think we're gonna dive right into some retro vaping. So stay tuned, cause you don't wanna miss this. We'll all be right back after a word from our sponsors. Well, lunch was delicious for anybody wondering. My amazing wife made uh, Beyond Burgers. We've been on this uh, Beyond Burgers kick recently. Just been eating a bunch of them. Beyond Burgers, vegan cheese, and avocados. It's just been it's just been a thing, and it's delicious. So that's what I had for lunch, but that doesn't matter. We're here to retro vape, and what I have to retro vape this week is an RDA. This RDA came out in 2017 and I had a real, real boner for this RDA. It had a few different caps. It had a few different looking AFCs on it. And the RDA that we're retro vaping today, you see that right there? Yep. This is the Crichton RDA from uh, Cyclone Mods. You can see the engravings right there. Yeah. Cyclone Mods Crichton. I used to love, love this RDA. I uh, I rewatched my review of this recently, which inspired the Retro Vape because 
in that video, you can go back and watch it. I'll try to link to it down in the description of this video. It was just a gush fest, just gushing, gushing about this RDA. It is, I mean, I just was going on and on. I said, oh, this is going to, you know, this might be my favorite RDA of 2017. Only it was like in February of 2017. So, yeah. Definitely gonna be best of the year two months in. It kind of had a real weird deck on there as well. It was like this kind of a velocity style deck, but your your top leads and your bottom leads had to be so far away from each other. It honestly wasn't that great to build on. Looking at this deck right now, I'm thinking, why was this like why was this like your top? RDA of 2017, like how could you make such bold claims like that? The deck is kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass. Well, regardless of that, I'm gonna get these, uh, I'm gonna get these glowing. This is the previous build that I had on here when I was using it. I was using this on the Revenant for a really long time and this is the prior build. It's a 0.23, set at about uh, 63 watts right now, glowing. Glowing evenly. I'm just going to, uh, through the magic of video editing, I'm gonna throw some uh, wicks in here right now. One of the things in this review for this for this Crichton RDA that I just kept going on and on about, just gushing about was, I was just so amazed that all of my 810 drip tips fit inside of this top cap and I would not shut up about it. I just literally, I'm like, literally like, you guys, you don't understand. Every drip tip that I have, like every 810, every DHD, every 810 I have fits in here and works just so perfectly. Like, yeah, it's an 810 drip tip. Of course, like, of course all the 810s are going to work. It's rare that like some, sure, you'll, you'll run across like a few 810s that maybe won't work, but... It's an 810, so theoretically all 810s should work in it, right? There, shit, I'll even throw an Ultem 810 on there right now. I was just watching that video and it was just so weird and awkward. I'm like, Nick, will you shut up about the 810? Like, good God, man. We get it, they all fit in there. Oh, amazing, amazing. Okay, it is pretty slick to wick. Haha, <laughs> slick to wick. Yeah, it is pretty slick to wick. It was real easy. Just got the wicks in there. And you can see the Crichton does that thing with the notch right here like the Turk V2 does. It's not my favorite way to adjust airflow, but it is it is a way to adjust airflow. I'm just gonna put the very little last droplets that I have of Rescued E-Liquids. Nico, Rescue E-Liquid, uh, great E-Liquid company. I'm, I'm a big fan of some of the stuff they do. They they named, uh, they named one of their liquids after my dog. They have a line of liquids called Pack Leader, and they're, uh, they're naming them after industry people's dogs, and I just love that. I love the idea behind Rescued. I love that they're an e-liquid company that also rescues dogs. That's just... I mean, that's eight kinds of win. And this is uh, this is Nico. Now, you know, I don't I don't make any money off of this. If you buy a bottle of Nico, you're gonna get a bottle of e-liquid from Rescued. And then I go, I hope you enjoy it, you know? I'm not getting any sort of kickbacks or anything like that. I just think they're a great company. They named a liquid after my dog and the liquid happens to be rock and roll. Snickerdoodle cookie custard. Get the airflow completely open. We'll get it centered in front of it. You know, those airflow slots were just, so low, when I got this back out, I couldn't believe that I never had a problem with it flooding before or like leaking out of that airflow. I'm a person that's an over dripper. I mean, hands down, I over drip like crazy. And with those airflow slots being so low, ah, I'm surprised that I never had an issue with it like leaking out. I don't know, they're just low and that's, I'm just saying, I'm surprised. So here we go, 0 0.21, 63 watts on the Crichton RDA. I have pretty good airflow. It's a little bit too open. I'm gonna turn this airflow down just a little bit, but I'm not gonna do it with the low airflow adjustment. I'm gonna do it with the high airflow adjustment. There we go, there we go. Now you can kind of position that at your coil. Now we're in business, Crichton. Here's the thing, that flavor's really nice. The airflow is terribly smooth, 
terribly smooth. It's just gonna need some more wattage here. Gonna go from 63 to like 76. How about that? That's right around four volts. And e this Crichton is pretty conducive to blowing your juice through the drip tip. You can just bleh, which again, I'm surprised that I never had any leaking issues with it. Like liquid coming out of the airflow holes. It's because they're low. Have I, <laughs> have I mentioned that the airflow slots are really low on this RDA yet? Nice. It's a nice vape. You know, the flavor, it's okay. The flavor's not, honestly, not that great on this RDA. With that airflow. Okay, after vaping it, I'm kind of remembering why I really liked it. The flavor's fine. It's like not really anything to write home about, but it's the overall vape experience. That's one of those things that I constantly talk, I constantly refer to it. It's the final full vape experience. What happens? The magic that happens when you press the button and inhale. This delivers extra smooth airflow. Silly smooth airflow. Smoother than I remember airflow. This, that is really nice. Dang. All right, so shit, the Crichton kind of holds up. I still don't love that deck, you know? I, I don't love that deck. I don't like building on that deck. I don't... I don't like that deck, it's a weird deck. Still, even in retrospect, it's a weird ass deck. But I like being able to bleh. I like the vape experience I'm getting. I like the smooth airflow. I like that I just bled my liquid in there and it's not leaking out the airflow holes. It's, a, it's just a nice vape. It's a very smooth airflow vape. I can't, it's one of those intangible things. It's just the experience. There's no like one aspect of this RDA that like completely blows me away. Like, oh, the deck is great or just the airflow is awesome or, you know, the juice well, next level juice well, bro. You've never seen a juice well like you have on this RDA, just straight up next level. It's not particularly attractive or anything, although I do like the really clean lines on it. It's that intangible thing, that, that vape experience at the end. That's what the Crichton's about, I guess. Dang. All right, Crichton. Well, shit, you still hold up. That's honestly, that's truly and honestly vaping as good as my recoil, as good as my dead goat. Maybe it's not as crackly. Okay. Comparing the airflow to the dead goat, the dead goat actually has a little bit smoother of an airflow. It has cracklier coils. It still, still holds, I still think it holds up. I still think it holds up. This is one of those like weird RDAs. It never really caught on. It never really got real popular. I really liked it, but I don't think this was a huge, huge success for Cyclone Mods. If you can find one, it's probably gonna be second hand. But shit, if you're a vape collector or a vape enthusiast like myself and you wanna track one down and get this vape, I would, I would recommend it if you're that person. Enjoyable, quite enjoyable. Well, dang, okay, that was awesome. That was awesome. Crichton RDA really holds up. Not that I wasn't expecting it to, you know, it's only a few years old. It only came out in 2017, but still, there's some stuff in 2017, came out in 2017 that does not hold up. Anyway, let's move onward, onward and forward, shall we? Past retro vaping, I think it's about time to have a very, 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 Kent, very random liquid tasting. All right, well, I got my uh, DB, DB mods, Def mods, giant DNA 250C guy. It is topped with a very non matchy matchy blue, freshly rewicked goon V1 RDA. This is an, this is an upper echelon top tier RDA I'll never be without. You know, when I think of the best of the best, the goon just falls in there. And to this day, it holds up. I vape the goon regularly still and that's what we're going to be tasting it on and just pro tip goon with two air flows open not all three just two i feel personally that whatever that's the best that's my favorite okay the liquid we are going to be tasting tonight this is tokyo banana i think this came from beecher 
I think this came from Indonesia. Zooey, Zooey Vapes, Nick Vape, Zooey, Z-O-O-E-Y, E-Liquid. This is Tokyo Banana, Banana Custard Cream Cake Flavor. Vape Zoo. Okay, yeah, Vape Zoo, Indonesia. Vape Zoo, Tokyo Banana. Now, <sighs> Indonesia has released Bule Bolu. And that came from Indonesia, and it's literally, I mean, that's the banana flavor to just kill all other banana flavors. Even, like, even my other favorite banana flavor, Hooch Pure Banana, Bule Bolu still kind of rocks Hooch Pure Banana as well. So, Tokyo Banana. I have high hopes for Tokyo Banana. I'm sick, I'm, I'm honestly a little sick of Bule Bolu being like, oh, I'm the best banana flavor. Bule Bolu's getting a little cocky. You know, Bule Bolu's been on the throne for a little too long. Maybe Bule Bolu has a little bit of a big head. We're gonna try to knock Bule Bolu down a peg or two. Hopefully, hopefully this can do it. Like I have some fucking vendetta against Bule Bolu. I don't. I have some fucking vendetta against the world's strongest plastic on this bottle though. Oh my lord. Glass dripper bottle too. That's not something uh, that's not something you see so much anymore. I wonder if that's uh, only a popular thing in uh, in Indonesia. So, let's give it a little quick shake. We're just going to have a little bit of a uh, knuckle test right here. Oh, it's a very deep amber banana looking color. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, all right, weird. Let's just get these all saturated so we can vape it. Can you guys see that? Like the color of this liquid? It looks like the liquid itself looks like a banana flavored liquid. A vapor. So we got a 0.12, I'm gonna set this to about 80 watts. I'm just gonna have an inaugural toot. Cheers. Oh, there's a lot going on in this flavor. All right, damn it. Well, uh, I'm still gonna have to do that thing where I, I just sit back here just for a hot second and vape this. We'll come back and talk about it. Cue the music. Okay, okay, okay. I think I figured this out. I think I have figured this liquid out. It tastes to me like a banana, like a uh, cocktail. That's what I'm getting from this. It's banana, it's a very candied banana. It's not a, it's not a fresh banana, like a banana banana. It's a very candied, like a taffy runts kind of banana. There has to be, there has to be a hair of culotta in this. There just has to be. There's a very slight, subtle, very subtle cooling sensation that happens. And I'm also getting this more of a low note undertone to it. Like it, it reminds me of a cocktail because it's kind of like a uh, banana amaretto cocktail a banana amaretto cocktail that cools you off. I mean, so subtly that I didn't really even notice it till a few toots in and I exhaled and I felt the cooling cold sensation in my mouth hole. Yeah, there's a distinct, I don't wanna say bakery, but that could be. There's like a cakey low note to it. Like it's not golden cake, but it's not chocolate cake. Like, it's like a coffee cake. It's like banana coffee cake with a little bit of culotta in it. Final answer, banana coffee cake with a little bit of culotta in it, boom roasted. Yeah, it's like banana. Really interesting banana. If that, I get like a Kahlua type of flavor. That's why I keep wanting to say coffee cake. It tastes like banana Kahlua coffee cake with a little bit of a cooling sensation in there. Not enough, like it's not a, you don't taste it. It's not like a flavor thing. It's just something I noticed after I inhale and exhale while not vaping. This is crazy unique. I have never had a liquid like this. 
This is a very, a very complex, complex layered liquid. There is a lot, a lot going on in this. This is some top shelf liquid. I mean, this is, this tastes like the difference, you know, between like a $60 30 mil. That's what this tastes like. This is like craft e-liquid. Not craft like mac and cheese craft. Craft like with a C. Craft like long beards and fixed gear bicycles. Craft e-liquid. Dude, I am impressed with this. I'm impressed with this. It's honestly, it started off really intensely enjoyable and the more that I vape it, I get a little bit more and more sick of it. In fact, if I have one more toot, I think that's actually gonna be it. This would be this would be a liquid that I would put in a setup that I would have in my arsenal as like just a palate cleansing type of liquid. I could probably have like 10 to 12 toots on that and then be good and, and be ready to move on to something else. It is incredibly rich layers of flavor in this banana coffee cake, like this Kahlua amaretto type of flavor. Really unique, really interesting. Well. Shit, I guess I'm gonna keep vaping that liquid now too. Well, one more time, shout out to Beecher and I guess uh, Vape Zoo as well for the Tokyo Banana Signature. Well, that wraps up our liquid tasting. Shit, you guys, we are uh, we're really getting down to the end of uh, the end of the vlog here. Nope, because we're gonna do getting to know Grim Green. So on a previous Getting to Know Grim Green, we did a record. We did the Fu Manchu California Crossing album. And I mentioned my buddy, Mark Moots. I think I've said this before and I'll say it again, but there's gonna be a, a bunch of these Getting to Know Grim Greens, like these records that somehow, like their roots, the, the story always goes back to Mark Moots. He's gonna be a frequent topic of discussion. And the record that we're doing tonight, yes, it's, its roots go back to, the story goes back to, Mark Moots. I'll give you the abbreviated version of this story now because I think I've given you the full version a lot of times, but there was a time in my life where, you know, it's whatever. I was listening to a lot of, uh, you know, metal and hardcore and like a Treyu and uh, Earth Crisis and hardcore metal bands and stuff like that. God, how old was I at that time? It must've been 27 or 28 and uh, I joined The Swamp Donkey with Mark Moots. And to sort of prepare me for the kind of, you know, for the musical stylings that the Swamp Donkey was going to be, he burned me a huge box of CDs, like a shoebox full of CDs. And it was packed with everything I had never heard before. And every band, you know, every CD after the CD was just the next one was the favorite. And then I heard like Place of the Skull. And you're like, oh, this is amazing. Where have you been all my life? And it's like, here's Acid Bath. Welcome to Acid Bath. And you're like, Acid Bath is amazing. And so I'm flipping through and I'm flipping through and Every day it was like, you know, new musical discoveries and new bands and, you know, I wasn't into like, you know, head first into all of them. I didn't fall in love with all of them, but they were all like cool, new, interesting bands that I'd never really heard before. And there was one CD in there that I, I was, I don't know, for whatever reason, maybe it was the name, I was just avoiding it. I'd get to it and I'd just skip past it. And the day I remember exactly where I was. I was in Carson City, Nevada at the Rayleigh's at the at the at the south end of town. If if you if you've ever been to Carson City, you know the Rayleigh's on the south end of town. I was in that parking lot flipping through the CDs and I finally pulled out Rainbow Rising and put that CD in and it and it just exploded my brain. And I was instantly like, I instantly regretted every time I had passed this CD over in that box. And it wasn't just that I regretted like passing over that CD in my box. Rainbow was legitimately one of those bands that I was like, why haven't I been listening to this for way longer? So Rainbow, Rainbow, as they became to be known, they used to be Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. And Richie Blackmore was in the band Deep Purple. I feel like, I feel like Deep Purple should be pretty well known. We've all heard Deep Purple. I mean, Smoke on the Water, that's one of the most popular, you know, rock guitar riffs of all time, Smoke on the Water. So Richie Blackmore, Deep Purple. Richie Blackmore leaves Deep Purple, starts Richie Blackmore's Rainbow with Ronnie freaking James Dio 
on vocals. Now this is before Ronnie James Dio was Ronnie James Dio. This is back in a time, 1975, when Ronnie James Dio was singing with his first band, Elf. In fact, on the very first Rainbow album, the self-titled Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, it was basically just Richie Blackmore, Ronnie James Dio, and then Ronnie James Dio's band, Elf, playing that first record. And apparently the story goes that Richie Blackmore was so, uh, so, you know, like disgusted with this band that he just fired the entire band after the first album was recorded. Like they weren't good enough to be in Rainbow. He just kept Ronnie James Dio. And their first album, that Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, it's got bangers on it. I don't have it on vinyl, but it's got some bangers on it. That is the album that brought us, uh, uh, Man on the Silver Mountain, which if you've ever heard of the band Alabama Thunder Pussy, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. They did a cover of Richie, of uh, Rainbow's Man on the Silver Mountain. It's amazing. It's amazing. At least I think it was Alabama. Mm, yes, Alabama Thunder Pussy, Man on the Silver Mountain. Check it out. It's a great cover. Check out the original, honestly. I'm gonna be putting two tracks from this record, from Rainbows Rising, on the Grim Green, you know, uh, the, the playlist on Spotify, GTKGG, The Jams. I will always have a link uh, in the description to that particular Spotify playlist, but we're gonna be adding two tracks off of Rainbows Rising album. This was their second album. The album they did after this was, uh, Long Live Rock and Roll, and that was the last album with Ronnie James Dio on it. Rainbow continued to be a band, and they're fine. In fact, I used a Rainbow song as the intro to all of my vape videos for like a, a solid year. It might have even been longer than that. It might have been like two years that I used a Rainbow song, and I used a Rainbow song from Rainbow after Ronnie James Dio left. So. There you go. Look at that little young, young little Ronnie James Dio right there. Just young and hopeful. And this obviously, obviously, obviously is not an original record from 1975. This is a reissue after reissue after reissue. And I happen to get one with red vinyl. That just makes me happy. Yeah, look at that. Look at little Ronnie James Dio. I'm honestly just a big fan of Ronnie James Dio. I, I love Dio. I love all his solo stuff. Some of my favorite Black Sabbath stuff is when Dio was in the band. Certainly all of my favorite Rainbow stuff is from when Dio was in the band. The two tracks that we're pulling off this record to go on the Spotify playlist is track three, Run With The Wolf. Ha, ah, banger. It's a banger. And then something a little more upbeat, the very next track, track four, track three, what did I say, track two? Track three, Starstruck. Run With The Wolf and Starstruck are going to be added to the playlist. Check out the playlist, listen to it, open your mind to a whole new world of music and bangers and shit, why not start with Rainbow? So yeah, I have uh, Mark Moots to thank for exposing my ear holes to the, to the wonderfulness of Rainbow. So yeah, those tracks will be added to the playlist and uh, now we're gonna get back to you know, whatever was happening before. I think it's, it's pretty clear that I, I shot this segment afterwards uh, probably because all the vapor's gone and then just inserted it into the vlog. So so thanks for watching. Now we're going to go back to, I think we were towards the end. I think we were honestly towards the end of the vlog. So, you know, back back at it. Back back, uh, back to you. Dang. I, I really think the last thing that we have to do, it's time. It's We haven't done it in a while, you guys, but let's do some favorite comments of the week. All right, damn it. Well, here we go. We got a we got a cloudy office as it always looks at the end of the vlog and we're going to finally do some favorite comments of the week. Pfft. I don't know about you guys. This has been a great vlog. Been wearing the chainsaw all night. One thing I didn't say, don't forget to stay hydrated, everybody. Hydro homies. So we're just going to go ahead and wrap this vlog up with a few favorite comments of the week. First favorite comment of the week kind of took me by surprise. This was from uh, this was from the chat in a vlog like a few weeks ago. And these comments were made before the stream started. This this happened when I was when I was just setting up the stream. From the oh, very accurately named Unjoyer. Are there any reviewers left that actually still do vape reviews? 
news. Fucking leave the corona shit to the media. Do your thing. Or you going to dip into freaking mask reviews now? Unsubbing until the next vaping video. And then it was just like insult to injury. Just throwing salt on my wound. Just kidding. Not even subbed. Cheers. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's whatever. That's just something that... That's just something that, I hate the term influencer. Can I just say that one more time? Influencer has just become this blanket term for anybody that has like a social media following. It used to be a YouTuber. You used to be a YouTuber. And now you're an influencer. This is something that I've been dealing with for years and years and years and years. Probably, you know, close to eight, nine years you deal with this of people that really want you to know that they're unsubscribing to you and really want you to know why they're unsubscribing to you. And they really want you... They really want you to feel it. You know, they really want you, they really want to just, just dig that knife and just really twist it around. I've had comments from people. There was one favorite comment of the week from, I couldn't even remember, a few months ago. Uh, and someone had, someone said, I'm paraphrasing, but they said like, uh, you're, you'll never be funny. You lack artistic vision. Really out for blood kind of stuff. Well, Unjoyer, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You're not sub to me in, in the beginning in the first place, so I, I don't care. I'm not living up to your expectations. I apologize. And just to be fair, Mr. Unjoyer, I have not done any videos that aren't vape related. Every video I do is based in vaping. But I feel like if you were paying attention, you probably would have noticed that. It's whatever. I don't care. I don't engage trolls. Nick, come on. You know better than that. Got another I've got another comment here from a dude named Jerry. And Jerry just says, You cares what say about state of the country, you idiot. You cares. I don't I don't know. I don't I I legitimately don't know what that means. It looked like he just hit the caps lock button and was so enraged he just didn't care about grammar or spelling or anything. It was just like Aah. You idiot. What did I just choose a bunch of negative ones this week? I guess so. I think there's a good one in here, but the Dudabides commented and said, Wow, Grim, really disappointed with your anti Trump posts, which means you are anti American and obviously pro socialist. Really shame. Unsubscribing now. Well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you for letting me know that I'm just thoroughly, thoroughly un American. Can't be, uh, Critical of the president if you want to be an American. Nope. <laughs> if you want to be an American, you just, you're never critical of the president. In fact, don't just don't be critical of any politicians. Politicians can do no wrong. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I mean, I wish I had time to unpack everything that's wrong in that comment. Uh, I got another favorite comment of the week here from Jimmy. He said, uh, while watching the replay, I noticed that Lemmy is doing the Jay Hayes hand. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Lemmy. Boop. Yep, he's flipping it right there. Uh, sorry. I mean, I might, I might, if Jay Hayes sends me an email and it's like, bro, take that down. That's my thing. And you know that. And I might have to make, well, see, maybe this is proof. Lemmy was doing it first. So mm, I got a comment of the week here from Hell Rocks or Hell Razor. 911. Dude, why didn't you go on the Joe Rogan show? Dude, you could have helped in so many ways, like so many. Dude, yeah, you know, I would, uh, here's the thing. I would love to go on the Joe Rogan podcast, but here's what I've learned about Joe Rogan recently is you don't get to get Joe Rogan's attention. Joe Rogan is his own man. He does his own thing and he will find you if he wants to find you. If he's interested, he'll seek you out. And no amount of flag waving and arm waving and emails and texts and tweets at Joe Rogan is gonna change that. That's, that's just who he is. So I'll just say this, of course I would love to go on the Joe Rogan podcast. Nothing would make me happier. I would love to represent vaping and tobacco harm reduction. I mean, we could talk shit on the Surgeon General. We could talk shit on the CDC. We could talk shit on the World Health Organization. We could talk about MSA blood blood money. I mean, this is, this is ripe with stuff that Joe Rogan would love. I mean, deep government corruption, but the odds of me getting on Joe Rogan's radar, pretty slim to none. <laughs> so unfortunately I just won't be, uh, <laughs> I won't be holding my breath to get on the Joe Rogan podcast. Last and final favorite comment of the week. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one. That, <laughs> this is a good one that gives me a chuckle for every one, like a subscriber that I have that, that like unsubs angrily over something I said about Trump or whatever, for every person that angrily unsubs, you, you you get you get a bunch of Sergio's. Sergio left a comment and said, "I give up. You're a good vape reviewer, and yeah, you're funny too." <laughs> Thank 
you. Thank you, Sergio. That was hands down like one of the best comments I've ever seen. I just pictured Sergio like maybe vaping, building an RDA, watching a Grim Green video and just finally being like, fine. You're fine, Grim Green. You're a good reviewer and you're kind of funny too. Ugh. Like just... <laughs> Just reluctantly, sort of uh, begrudgingly getting to that conclusion. Anyway, Sergio, thank you. Anyway, uh, holy shit, you guys. I think we're at the end. I think we're at the end of this vlog. Real quick. Let me just take a real quick look around the room, make sure I didn't forget anything. No. I think we're good. I think we're, uh, I think we're good. I think I got everything out that I wanted to talk about. The news, the beer, the vapes, the building, the, 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 the banana liquid, the Beecher behemoth coils. I mean, dang, this was a good vlog. This was a good fun vlog. Like if I'm being really honest, I have had a lot of fun today shooting and editing you know, I'm only assuming that I had fun editing. I, d I don't know right now, but I'm assuming I'll have fun editing it. I've just been having a really, uh, a really fun time today, shooting this vlog, doing it a little bit old school, getting to premiere it live and getting to hang out in the chat right over there all night while we all watch the vlog together. Uh, I have really high hopes. I have really high expectations and, and I hope that it, I hope that it lived up. I hope I had fun. I hope you guys had fun tonight at the premiere of this vlog and that we got to hang out in the chat and have that like community sort of fellowship aspect, you know, time with the vlog. When I was thinking about going back maybe to doing some pre-recorded vlogs, cause that's what, you know, I was kind of itching to do. Not that I don't love, love live streaming and I do. I, I legitimately do love it and I love getting to spend time with you guys and, and interact with the chat and hang out, but I'd really been kind of missing shooting and editing and kind of putting together these uh, these reviews and these vlogs and stuff like that. And it's just been, you know, today has been uh, a real refreshing sort of change of pace kind of day. So look, give me your guys' feedback. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the, in the comments down below. Um, I loved doing this and I would kind of like to do it again. Uh, I would kind of like to do it again next week. I mean, hashtag just saying, if you're down, I'm down and we're down and we can premiere these every week and we can hang out in the chat and we can still have, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to lose that. That's what I was afraid of. Like if I went back to shooting a vlog and editing a vlog and just releasing the vlog like I used to, then we kind of lose that, uh, you know, that, that community, that sort of coming together aspect of it that I really love, that I have come to, you know, need as part of my week, that like hang time, that like hangout session. I think we can get the best of both worlds. I think we can have a nice, clear, concise, edited, fun vlog. And I think we can still hang out and chat and do the damn thing. So the great big experiment, you know, I'm never really, uh, I'm never really satisfied with anything ever that I'm doing. I'm always fiddling. I'm always changing things and moving and cameras and whatever, you know, I'm always, I'm a fiddler and I like trying new things. So I'm fiddling. We're trying a new thing this week. And, uh, Hopefully, with all of your help, it was just a huge success, right? Just smashing success. Anyway, since we're not live, I guess I'll say this still. Uh, that's what she said is on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. The vape team is also on Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Variety is the spice of life. That's all I got for today, everybody. Thank you, seriously, so much for watching. I'm gonna grab my def mods, I'm gonna grab my goon, and I'm going to continue to vape this weird, 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 weird banana flavor from Indonesia. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And no matter what anybody tells you, absolutely, let's keep on vaping. Peace. <laughs>